ce bloc, euh, le volet musical et ludique du French Fest euh, 2022. Music and games for the last event of the 2022 edition, 10th edition of the Seattle French Fest. So we will start with some music uh, and singing. We have a special performance by the Bogos Band, led by Cyril Gosselin, uh, who's among us today. So bonjour, Cyril. Uh, the Bogos Band offers uh, original songs described as a lively musical and French storytelling combo. You'll notice influences reminiscent of the 1950s romantic Paris of French singers and songwriters, as well as the blues and jazz heritage from the New Orleans. This next performance was recorded by the band, especially for the French Fest. Alors, profitez bien de cette chanson qui nous est livrée par the Bogos Band. Cache sous ses lunettes un regard triste ou naïf. Il ne veut pas qu'on sache. Il est un gros bonnet qui croyait à tout ça. Qu'on raconte dans ses livres qui vous laissent seulement. Qu'on le laisse un peu vivre comme il entend de lui. Pas comme c'est. Juste un peu, pas beaucoup, ça lui donnait du temps pour se remettre debout. Et c'est ce qu'il a fait. Chut, laissez-le tranquille, il est encore bien faible, il ne se fait plus bien. Elle est là.
Oui, bravo et merci. Merci au Bogus Band euh, donc, qui nous a offert euh, cette chanson. Thank you for the Bogus Band who offered us this song. They will be, uh, they have a show coming up, a concert on May 6 at Crossroads. And apparently they're also working on releasing an album recorded during a live performance in December 2021. Um, alors, euh, sur ça, j'aimerais faire juste une petite parenthèse cinéma. I would like to talk about movie briefly uh, before the games. Uh, we have another cultural offer, uh, this one from Quebec, that is brought to you by the Quebec government office in Los Angeles and l'Alliance Française de Seattle. Um, it, will be, uh, it will be a virtual screening of Maria, a movie that was produced in 2021 in Quebec. You will have a link. You have the link to register already in the chat. Uh, the movie will be available for you to watch all the way till, I mean, today, starting today at 4 p.m., all the way till March 23rd. And then on March 24th, from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., there will be a Ciné Salon Spécial Québec. So a conversation about the movie Maria that's organized by the, the Alliance Française de Seattle with, again, the Quebec government office, La Délégation Générale du Québec à Los Angeles. Um, and briefly, The Story of Maria is a movie uh, that stars and was co-written by Mariana Mazza. She's a stand-up comedian. She's known for uh, her colorful language and uh, strong humor. Uh, and it's the story of this young woman who's out of work, out of money, and basically out of serious ambition But then she promises her dying mother that she will try to achieve something useful during her life. So she decides to become a substitute teacher without any experience. So you can only imagine the type of situation that this leads to. Uh, it's both funny and touching. Uh, so if you want to register, this is uh, just uh, right now, the links are in the chat. Pour uh, ce visionnement virtuel, donc le lien est valide jusqu'au 23 mars et le 24 mars, un deuxième lien, donc, pour le café, le ciné-salon, pardon, euh, Québec, avec euh, l'Alliance française. On this, I was just talking now about this character who decides to become a substitute teacher without any experience. Uh, and on that, I would like to introduce people who do have a lot of experience when it comes to teaching. Uh, we have games organized by the French schools and after-school programs of the, in the Puget Sound. And unlike Maria, our coming guests are real teachers and real educators. I think it's important to mention. And for people who might not know, I didn't know before I started working with you guys on the French Fest, I was not aware of how important and big uh, the educational French speaking network is in your area. Uh, again, schools that are working on, us, on this with us today are the French American School of Puget Sound, the French Immersion School of Washington, Lilila French Bilingual Community School, and North Seattle French School, as well, yes, bonjour, as well as the Alliance Française and its after-school program. So they have prepared some game, games for us, and to tell us more about it, I think I will welcome first Barbara Grainer. C'est bien ça, Barbara? On va commencer avec vous? Oui. Ah, mais vous êtes à mute en ce moment. Your microphone's on mute. Thank you. I think it's the sentence that we have heard the most during the past two years. <laughs> Thank you for your, for your introduction. Yes. Ben, ça fait plaisir. So Barbara, just to remind people, you are the principal of the French Immersion School of Washington. Yes, I'm the principal of the French Immersion School of Washington. And we have here uh, four French schools that are French Immersion School. Uh, we have FASPS, we have the North Seattle French School, we have the French Immersion School of Washington, and we have Lila. And we also have l'Alliance Française, uh, who is teaching both adult and children. Um, our missions of our school, they are different, yet similar. We provide a bilingual education in French and English. And today we are here um, to support French Fest on the theme of... Um, Uh, food <laughs> and uh, we all the schools have prepared some games and what we are going to do is we are going to play this game one by one Perfect. and everyone who participates um, will have the opportunity to uh, win a prize and the prize is a library 
uh, that is age appropriate. And it's um, each school will donate two to three books towards uh, constituting a great library. So if you are interested in participating in the game and participating in the ability to win a library, <laughs> a little bit, bit, bit library of French books, you can put your name in the chat. And we have Virginie, who is the director of uh, the French School of Les Lilas, who, who, will, um, be, who will be entering all the names in the Wheel of Fortune. And at the end, uh, we will uh, see who will be the designated winner. Uh, it's a game that is both for children and adults, but um, mainly for children. But adults are also welcome to participate. Si on a un cœur d'enfant, on peut participer. Voilà. <laughs> yes, the heart of a child. Of a child. That's perfect. Yeah. So okay, I we think... have names coming in. So uh, we can proceed with the first game, perhaps? Yes. Does Pauline uh, with the Alliance Française wants to start? Thank you, Pauline. Yeah, sure. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much. We're so happy to be part of the French Fest today. I'm Pauline Chateau, and I'm the admission coordinator, and I'm an instructor as well at the Alliance Française de Seattle. And if you want to check out our programs, I will just uh, send a link, but it was, I think, already there in the, in the chat. And I guess I can proceed with sharing my screen. So let's do that. OK. Okay, can you all see my screen? Okay, wonderful. Oui. So our game is for adults and children. So feel free to um, give your answers in the chat or just, I guess, orally is fine too. I'm not sure what's the best way to do it, but uh, this is the game that we wanted to uh, offer today. So can you guess the meaning of the following idiomatic expressions? So these are expressions in French that comes not only from France, as you know, French is spoken in different uh, um, parts in the world, in different countries. And idiomatic expressions is an expression that doesn't literally means what it says. Like for example, in English, sometimes you would say, or some people say it's raining cats and dogs. Well, it's not literally raining cats and dogs, but it means that it's rains a lot. So we're trying to guess what these expressions mean. And you'll see that they are all related to food. So actually most of them come from France because of that. Yeah. Uh, the, fr the first one I wanted to introduce is literally to have the French fry, in French, avoir la frite. Any idea? So this comes from France. If you have no idea, I'll give you a few uh, options, three options, but if you have any idea, you can type it in the chat or just say it. So look at the, look at the man here. He looks pretty happy. <laughs> Et avoir la frite. Ah, I see Sidonie having a lot of energy to be happy. Actually, <laughs> these are my options. <laughs> Someone is saying when it's a hot day in France. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if it ever happens, yeah. <laughs> okay. Ah, ah, to have an idea, it's true that the drawing is a little bit like uh, that light bulb above our head, but it's a frite. To be fried, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> now the, the answer is, and I think someone gave the, the answer is to feel in great shape. You have a lot of energy, you're very enthusiastic to you feel in great shape today. Avoir la frite. Okay, pretty good. The next one comes from France as well. And avoir le melon. So literally in English, to have the melon. Any idea? Look at the expression of the melon head. Il y a un sourire. Mm -hmm. Have a bow. Okay. I'll give you the different options. To have a headache, to feel superior, or to be in a hurry. To think you're intelligent, to feel, yeah, that's the answer. Yes. B? Answer B, to feel superior. Yeah. Hmm. Good job. Perfect. Okay, the next one, uh, we're going to travel a little bit. This one comes from Ivory Coast, Côte d'Ivoire, mm. avoir deux bouches, in English, to have two mouths. <laughs> hey. Very good, All right? So to eat a lot, to speak a lot, or to be a liar? 
Britain. Ah. <laughs> Wait, that's res response C to be a liar. Absolutely. Very good. Okay. The next one, back to France, raconter des salades, to tell salads. Raconter des salades, to tell tales. So I wanted to offer a few suggestions to tell lies, to be a vegetarian, or to talk about gardening. Okay, <laughs> I see a lot of good answers. Perfect. It is to tell lies. So you can say raconter des salades, or someone who tells a lot of stories that are not really true. Okay, so now let's go to Democratic Republic of the Congo. Manger quelqu'un, literally to eat someone. <laughs> Avoir faim, to be hungry. Cannibalisme. <laughs> Alors, to cook for someone, to defeat someone, or to make fun of someone. A, B, C, C, B. <laughs> okay. So the answer is to defeat someone. Oh, wait. Honestly, I didn't know this one. I discovered it uh, with the image. Yeah. Kind of surprising. Okay, mm. on continue, have a few more. Back to France, tomber dans les pommes to fall in the apples. <laughs> Qu'est-ce que c'est? What is this? Is it to fall asleep, to faint, or to make an apple pie? Wait, it is, it is answer B, to faint. Wait, to faint, tomber dans les pommes. Okay, you're doing great. On continue. Uh, Senegal now. Conduire dans des tablettes de chocolat to drive on chocolate bars. Here are the possibilities. To drive slow, to drive to the supermarket, or to drive on a road filled with potholes. Mm. C, C, A, A. Oui, c'est is... ah, oui. ouais. une expression qu'on pourrait utiliser euh, beaucoup à Montréal ces jours-ci. <laughs> really? <laughs> At the end yeah. of the winter in Montreal, we have potholes that, I mean, are gigantic. So I'll try to use that one. <laughs> so Montreal is basically a huge uh, chocolate bar right now. <laughs> I wish, I wish. <laughs> um, back to France. En faire tout un fromage, to make a cheese out of it. Is it... To exaggerate a fact, to cook for a lot of people, or to let food spoil. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Well, it is it is a to exaggerate a fact. Yeah. Do we have more time for a few more or, mm -hmm. or no? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. This one comes from France, but specifically from the. Provence region. So I'm from Normandy, I've never heard that. Uh, le temps de tuer un âne à coup de figue. Literally in English, the time to kill a donkey with figs. So is it for a useless action, a tiring action, or an action that takes a lot of time? I've seen a lot of A and B. It's actually C. You use that to talk about an action that takes a lot of time because you would take a lot of time to finally kill that donkey with figs. You would probably eat them all anyway. I would, I would. Um, the next one, se faire rouler dans la farine in English, to be rolled in a flour by someone. And this comes from friends. To be fooled by someone, to be taken care of by someone, or to be fed by someone. Ah, humiliation, A, A, A. Okay, yes, it is A, to be fooled by someone. Okay, and I think I have one more for you. Mettre les pieds dans le plat, to put your feet in the dish. Mm. Not recommended, but again, it's an idiomatic expression, so it doesn't literally mean that. So to eat messily, to start eating without waiting for others, or to say something indiscreet and inappropriate. Okay, a lot of good answers. 
Yes, that was it. To say something indiscreet and inappropriate. Very good job. Very a lot of good answers in the chat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pauline from the Alliance Française. We are now going to go to the French um, French schools, and we are going to start um, with North Seattle French School. Merci, Barbara. Hi, everyone. My name is Aureli. Uh, I'm the admission coordinator for North Seattle French School. Uh, do we have any children in the audience today? Mm. Nope. Okay, so I have a, a game, but it's mostly for kids. Oh, you need to, to know some vocabulary in French. So let me share my screen. Okay. Can you see it? Okay, so I have, have prepared some rebus. I have no idea how to pronounce that word in English, uh, but I think it's the same. Um, and so, oh, just hold on, my son is coming. Do you want to come and play? <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> okay, you want to hug me. Perfect, thank you. Uh... <laughs> Do you want to stay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Too bad. Um, so we, um, so I would like to you to participate uh, so feel free to unmute yourself, uh, and I'm going to show you it's French uh, words in review about uh, food and about gastronomy. Okay, are you ready? So let's go. We start with an easy one. Do you have it? Nobody? Hmm. Alors, à gauche, on the left side is a pear, and on the right yes. side is a so glass. You have to say it in French. D'accord. Do, do you see it well? So, yes, we do. Poire, poireau, ah, et de l'eau. Okay. Oh, oui, j'ai entendu. Poireau. <laughs> so, lick in, in English. Okay, next one. You got it now. Mm -hmm. Oopsie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see it. <laughs> Citron. Yes, merci, merci au moins un qui participe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Citron, lemon. Okay, next one. Balea? No. Encore un. Okay. Donc, ça, c'est un cas. Cas. Moi, après, je vois des pagaies, mais. Ram. Ram. Caramel. Ah. Caramel. Merci, caramel. Mm -hmm. OK, le prochain. We need to know music for this one. Right. You need to that's know another music. language. <laughs> so that's me. Mm -hmm. Mirabel. Mirabel, merci. Mm -hmm. Mirabel. Ah, no, I don't want to go too fast. <laughs> so next one, maybe you see it. <laughs> Citrouille. Citrouille. Oui, merci. Citrouille. Déjeuner. Ah, déjeuner. Oui, déjeuner. <laughs> the lunch, déjeuner. Alors, le prochain, c'est anglais-français. C'est un mot en français, mais qui marche en anglais aussi. Et il faut utiliser les deux langues. Un petit peu plus dur, celui-là. <rire> OK. Char. Char. Toi. Là, il faut le dire en anglais. Finger. Finger? Cut. Ah, a cut. <laughs> oh, shortcut. Charcuterie. 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 Oh. <laughs> Charcuterie. We, we, we didn't need children to play that game. I think adults <laughs> have. That's <laughs> okay. Okay, merci beaucoup. <laughs> oh. <laughs> merci, Aurélie. <Wow. laughs> Oh, c'est bien mieux ça. Déborah from Fast. Bonjour, bonjour à tous. Bonjour. I'm Deborah. 
the admissions director at FASP, and we have uh, Eric, our head of school, uh, with us as well in Portland. So my game was initially for young children. So we will change it a little bit. <laughs> so it was a recipe game. And the goal was to see what should, how children would cook, you know, some dishes. So maybe we can share our tip, you know, mm -hmm. for the recipe. Oh, Aurélie, thank you. <laughs> so I will share my screen, but I'm sure we will be able to. Oh, la pauvre. Oh, <laughs> la pression, elle est énorme. But maybe we can share our tip, you know, and see how mm. you do this dish. So uh, you can just pick up, it will be more fun. So I guess everybody recognized this wonderful dish. And uh, do you have any tips to make some good crepe? And the children, you can tell what you put when you make crepes at home. <laughs> Les pauvres enfants. Alors, Aurélie, votre fils, il en mange combien des crêpes le matin? Il en mange combien des crêpes le matin? Mmh. On ne fait pas des crêpes tous les matins. <rire> non, hein? La fin de semaine. Qu'est-ce que tu mets sur ta crêpe? Mmh. Du Nutella. Mmh. Ah, ben ah, voilà. Un classique. <rire> so, if you want one of the. A tip that you, I don't know if you have tried to put some uh, beer in, so replace part of the milk with beer. It's extremely good and it makes lighter crepes. So if you want to try next time, it's really good and it's more from the north of France doing that. The second dish. Avec, avec la bière, oh. uh, si on ajoute, if we add beer to the mix, then I would suggest this time of the year here in Quebec, it's time for the sugar shack. This is a time where we make maple syrup from the tap, the, the sap that comes in the maple trees as the uh, spring arrives. And even though I will not say that Nutella on a crepe is not good, it is delicious, but you probably know too that maple syrup is a great match for a crepe. Um, and if you add beer, it made me think it, it'd be great. You can add some uh, ham and cheese. And yes, you can mix that with maple syrup and then it's heaven. <laughs> Thank you. I won't try with the ham because I'm vegetarian. Yeah, and vegetarian. you or you can even take actually some uh right now they sell a lot of uh meat free uh bacon, like yeah. fake bacon. Yeah. That would be a great addition to have that salty taste with the maple syrup sweetened sweet taste. And you just roll your crepe like that. And it's uh <laughs> so the second dish. I guess everybody recognizes it. Les enfants, vous savez ce que c'est? Mm. I don't see la choucroute. Do you like that? I did not see the chat. In fact, people were telling in the chat. So for the crepe, I had confiture aux framboises, ah, oui. raspberry jam and whipped cream, of course, sugar, banana, chocolate. Yeah, all this, the best. La choucroute. Have you ever had some? Les enfants, vous en avez déjà mangé? No. <laughs> So do you know what it is, this kind of, this vegetables that you can see? I don't see the chat very well. C'est du chou, but the kind of chou that is made, cabbage that is prepared in a, in a special way. Hmm. I'm not extremely fan of that, in fact. But... Oh, ça, est-ce que vous savez ce que c'est? Do you know what it is? from the south of France. Do you know this dish? Adult, you can participate too. Mm -hmm. On a une bonne réponse dans le chat. We have a good... Yes, two, oh yeah, twice. Two good answers. Un cassoulet. L'autre plat, so do you know this one? Mm -hmm. I do, I think. <laughs> This is one also traditional French dish. Yeah. Merci Parmentier. Merci Hachi Parmentier. Ouais. Et vous savez comment on appelle ça au Québec? No. Non? Ça, c'est une question quiz pour tout le monde. Au Québec, on ne dit pas un Hachi Parmentier, mais on a la même recette. Et le nom, on appelle ça un pâté chinois. Mm. 
like a Chinese, instead of a shepherd's pie, like a Chinese mm. pie. And the explanation behind that apparently is that it was used when they built the railroads in Canada all the way to the West. And many of the workers were of Chinese descent, but this was an easy meal to prepare for the workers. And hence it's been called pâté chinois. So it's, it's funny. So another a, t- um, a tip to make this dish. Well, I'm vegetarian. I'm not eating this anymore. But to replace the beef with, comment on dit confit de canard? Oh, duck confit. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if you replace the beef with a duck confit, it's extremely, extremely good. And you can have, you know, some onions, caramelized onions, and it's delicious. <laughs> but now there's a lot of mock meat you can easily using this as well. So this you cannot see very well. It's a dish uh, you have, yeah. Mm. Vegetarian use mushroom for the bottom. Yeah, absolutely. It's very good too, absolutely. So this dish is a dish with a lot of vegetables um, and there's a Disney, oh, mm. what it is, with a little rat. And this is the name of the little rat. Oh. Ouais, je sais, la ratatouille. 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 So a tip to do that, but it's not very healthy, would be really to cook every vegetable separately with kind of a lot of oil, you know, olive oil. And garlic. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of oils and it's, everything is much better. <laughs> And so let's go to the other game that I had planned that is kind of the same game, but the opposite. I'll give you the ingredient and you tell me what I can make with that. So if I have only water, salt, flour, and yeast, les enfants, qu'est-ce que je peux faire avec ça? Can I make crepes? Can I make a cake? Du pain? Merci, Anna. If I have only strawberries and sugar, mm. what can I make? Can I make jam? Can I make a cake? Can I make ice cream? Oui, confiture, jam, jam, confiture, bravo. And we can make something else just with raspberry and sugar. Strawberries and sugar or raspberry and sugar. Uh. So you can do ice cream. Yes, yeah, sorbet. Absolutely. It's almost like a frozen jam, you know, maybe a little less sweet. If I have only potatoes and oil, what can I make? Des frites. <laughs> it's true, I'm hungry too now. Des chips aussi. <laughs> and you know, I think you can also make some puree, but it's better with butter, better than with a little bit of oil. But you could. If you're vegan, you know you can make a puree with a little bit of oil instead of butter. If I have only oil, uh, salt, egg, and mustard, what can I make with that? Mayo. Mayonnaise, thank you. And I, and the last one, if I have whipped cream, what can I make? A latte, du beurre, butter, mm-hmm. or yogurt, butter. Du beurre. Thank you so much for participating to this very interesting adult game. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for playing with us. Et merci, merci les enfants. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, uh, Deborah. I think French Immersion School of Washington is going to go just after um, Deborah because we have a very um, similar game. So I think it would be good um, to have a, a, a similar game. So uh, can you see my screen? No? Oui. So basically, I got, I'm going to present to you f- typical dishes from France, from Switzerland, from um, usually the re- recipes are written in French, <laughs> uh, 
and I'm going to ask you what ingredients do we use to make these dishes and also where do these dishes come from. And I'm going to start with a dish that um, uh, Deborah has already presented to you. And uh, so you know now the name, they're either called crêpes aux galettes. And I wanted to know if you knew where, where they originated from. And I can't see the, the, the chat. So if anybody, it would be better if people sp spoke out or if somebody okay. writes it in the chat, if somebody can read it for me. I so, can read the chat. There's Brittany coming up. Brittany, exactly. It comes up from Brittany. And I did put a little beautiful picture of Brittany. And then I wanted to know if you can name at least three ingredients that we put in crepes. Maple syrup. On a la farine de sarrasin. Et sucre. Et sucre, du beurre, de la farine. Anything else? Le. 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 OK. I want to say sarrasin. Sarrasin, yeah. So we have eggs, flour, salt, milk, and butter. And Deborah wrote rum. <laughs> Rum, yes. <laughs> then we have, we are moving in a different countries and we have oh. here a dish. La Does Suisse. Do you know how, the name of this dish? La Suisse. It's from Switzerland. It's okay. a raclette from Switzerland. It's one of my favorite dish. I love raclette. In fact, I had a raclette yesterday for dinner. Oh. And um, it's coming from Switzerland. You have a beautiful ski station in Switzerland and basically you have mainly two ingredients for the raclette and um, if you could name those two two <laughs> ingredients that you can see. <laughs> Someone said banana and Nutella but I think that was for the <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> banana and Nutella are good too. <laughs> Alors on a les patates et le fromage, potato and cheese. Yes, and then with it, you can add uh, pepper, which is really good, and a delicious white wine. And someone mentions cornichon à côté. Cornichon. And viande and, de grison. Or viande de grison, or ham, or cured meat. I read yesterday that it was a favorite dish of French people. Really? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> so, what is this dish? Pocova. Poulopo. Poulopo. Exactly. Poulopo. Does anybody know where Poulopo originated from? Henri IV. Ah, yes, Henri IV uh, was, wanted every French people to have a Poulopo. And Henri IV was from Béarn. This region of France, and you have a beautiful pictures of Béarn. And do you know what are the main ingredients of poulopo and how do you cook a poulopo? Hmm. Other than the pool, I imagine. That's a very good start. There's a pool. <laughs> Water. <laughs> and pool are very, uh, very hard and they're not, yeah. they're not tender like poulet. So they are cooked in, in a poulopo because otherwise they, they would be too hard to, to eat. So how do you cook the, the, the pool and with what ingredients? We have a uh, chicken, uh, sorry, vegetables, water, poireau, leeks, mm -hmm. potato, carrots. That's what mm -hmm. people are writing right now. Yes. And you- Celery. Can... Sorry? Celery. Celery, yes, you can have celery. And you cook it very, very, very slowly uh, so that it becomes very, it, it is very, very tender. Okay, what is this dish? Hmm. Pate. Uh, it, it's a type of a pate, but it has a different name than pate. And at least three people have it right in the chat. Mm. Foie. Yes. Foie it's, gras. It's called foie gras, exactly. And the foie gras can be cooked two ways. It can be made into a pate or it can be deep fried. And you have put the two recipes close to each other. And do you know where the foie gras comes from? South. Um, south, 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 southwest. West. Yes. Dordogne. 
of the region of, of Aquitaine in the southwest. And the way it's done is is with the uh, foie gras of the of the foie gras d'oie. And it's unfortunately it's um, they are a little bit overfed, so the the foie is very fat. Then this one, um, uh, Deborah already spoke about, so you know the name. It's a cassoulet. And does anybody know where um, where the cassoulet comes from? Toulouse, the region of Toulouse, and you see Toulouse here, beautiful Toulouse. And can you name a few ingredients of the cassoulet? Lard, um, saucisson. We have the beans, beans, beans. specifically the white beans, les haricots blancs. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So here you have you are you have a different type of oh. meats. You have carrots, you have carrots, you have pine beets, shallots, garlic, water, wine, and onions. And um, this is also one of my favorite dish. I really love. Mm -hmm. Uh, so much for um, participating uh, in that game. And then now we have Virginie from uh, Lilila. Thank you, Barbara. Um, so before I start my game, I just wanted to make sure everybody who would like to participate to um, our raffle for the little library we put together in, in common. Uh, you put your name on the chat. I think I got everybody, but I just want to make sure for the one who came late, you can um, participate to this game by me putting your name uh, inside the chat. Uh, so now I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna have four little games. Um, the first one will be a scavenger hunt where I'm gonna give you a few ingredients and you will, a few um, um, little indices, and you will guess what is the, the food. And then we'll learn a little bit about um, uh, food, who is eating who, <laughs> and we'll end up by the part of the plants. Uh, so let's do it. Um, uh, let me share my screen right now. Screen share. Do you see my screen? Oui. Okay. So who, um, it's a fruit, c'est un fruit vert à l'extérieur et rouge à l'intérieur et qui a et, et avec des pépins. Qui est un fruit rouge à l'intérieur. Watermelon. What, what, alors en français, qui peut me dire watermelon? That's great. But who is in French? Who knows this? Pastèque. Pastèque. Exact. Oh. Exactement. Alors le deuxième. Oh, ça c'est un peu plus facile. It's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bun. You can uh, so donc c'est du pain avec de la saucisse, du ketchup et de la moutarde. Adrien, il lève sa main. Adrien, merci Adrien. Saucisse. Non, non regarde bien. Ah regarde. oui, de la saucisse, t'as raison. Il y a une saucisse. saucisse dedans. Mais alors, si tu le manges en fait, avec du pain, du ketchup et de la moutarde, c'est quoi Je demande comment on dit hot dog en français. <rire> euh, sandwich à la saucisse. <rire> chien chaud. Hot chien dog, chaud. oui. Ah, chien chaud. Chien chaud. <rire> Exactement. Okay. Um, alors, le deuxième, le, le troisième, um, c'est fait avec du maïs, du beurre, donc du maïs. En du popcorn. Du beurre. On utilise un, mic un, micro, un micro popcorn. Et ça fait pop. Donc, c'est du. Popcorn. Oui, c'est pas très dur. Hein. Uh, <rire> un petit dernier, après, je passe à un autre jeu. Uh, donc, c'est froid. Ça se sert avec une cuillère uh, un peu spéciale, comme ça. On le sert pas dans une... Oui, de la glace, exactement. Exactement. Euh, alors, maintenant, on va passer à un autre jeu, sinon je n'aurai pas le temps de faire tous les jeux que j'ai prévus. Alors, le deuxième, c'est une petite dictée muette. Um, so, it's, you have to guess the word in French. What is this fruit in French and try to spell it? So, let's try. Adrien? Poire. Poire. Donc, ça commence par quelle lettre? P. Mm -hmm. Après, tu veux mettre quoi comme lettre C'est le O, le I. C'est le O. O oh. oh, Super I. I. R. 
Bravo. Euh. Euh. On va voir si tu as raison. Tu es prêt On va regarder Oui, bah, c'était ça. <rire> Alors, celui-là est un peu. This one is a little bit harder, so you can tell me and I will spell for you. But this mm. one is a little bit harder. How we call um, this little. We use that in a galette also um, for when, when we celebrate uh, Epiphany. So, what is this, this fruit? All the, uh, it's from. Oui? I cannot see the chat, so if you want to say. OK, oui, dans le, dans le chat, on a quelqu'un qui a bien répondu. Il y a Egerim et Christine, les fèves, en plaçant et... le E accent grave en premier. Exactement, les fèves. Super. Oui, donc celui-là est un petit peu dur comme mot, mais ça va. Alors ça, c'est facile. Donc, qu'est-ce que c'est? Je l'écris pour vous. Pain. Du pain, exactement. Je suis de... yeah. Avec le A, I et N. Exactement. Euh, donc, je vais passer à mon autre jeu et on va faire les chaînes alimentaires. Alors, qui mange qui? Donc, ça, c'est un petit peu compliqué, mais on va y arriver. Donc, dans les régions polaires, qui mange qui en premier? Adrien, est-ce que tu as une idée? Non. C'est le petit poisson qui va manger le gros poisson, la, la grosse orque. Oh. <rire> manger le gros poisson? Non. Ou non. alors, c'est plus le pingouin qui mange l'orque. <rire> mange le petit poisson, tu crois? L'orque. L'orque peut manger le poisson. Moi, je pense que tu as raison, Adrien. L'orque, il mange tout le monde. Après, qui est-ce qui mange quoi? Le pingouin, uh -huh. le pingouin, il mange le poisson, le gros poisson, et le gros poisson, il mange le petit poisson. Ouais. Je pense que tu as il raison. Il mange des crêpes. Hein. Et il mange des crêpes. Non Exactement. <rire> ah, moi, j'ai vérifié. J'ai pas vérifié. Revenez. Je vérifie. Et oui, tu as raison. Maintenant, dans la forêt boréale, qui mange mmh. quoi Non, moi, je ne sais pas. <rire> Qu'est-ce que le hibou mange? Uh -huh. ah, le hibou en premier? Mm. Dis ça, Frédéric? Je, 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 ce n'était qu'une suggestion. <rire> oui, oui. C'est quoi comme animal? Euh, là, ça, un, un bébé lynx. Okay, Est-ce que, est que le hibou il peut manger le bébé lynx? Je crois. Mm. En attendant, la forêt boréale, je ne sais pas si vous connaissez ça, mais c'est le largest. Um, uh, largest forest and it's it, you can it's talk about we talk about eight eight countries the forest the forest boreal we have canada china uh, finland japan norway russia sweden and the united states yeah the lynx the baby lynx l'oiseau mm. le petit oiseau et le... 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 On va regarder. Ah oui, c'est ça. Oui, Alors, un petit dernier, la tundra. Alors, qui est-ce qui mange quoi dans la tundra Qui mange de la neige <rire> hmm. Adrien, est-ce que tu sais comment on appelle le hibou qui est tout blanc How do we call this white owl in French Mm, non, je ne sais pas. Mm. C'est le harfan des neiges. Mm. Mais moi, je, moi I think in, in English is the white owl like, or snow owl, I think. Mm -hmm. It is the emblematic bird of Quebec. Ah, okay. Mm. And so, do we know um, what country where we can find the tundra? Do you mm. know? So we can start by the hibou. So maybe he will eat Adrien. You think he will? Tu penses qu'il va manger ce, ce petit loup là? Mm. Ou alors c'est le petit hamster hein, qui va manger le loup? On va regarder. Euh... Oui. Comme ça? C'est quoi ça? Ça doit être du euh, lichen, ça doit être de la mousse. Mm. Eh oui. Wow. Voilà. On fait un petit dernier dans le désert. Alors là, c'est un peu plus compliqué dans le désert. Mm 
pense que pire. Je pense ouais, que. Ça, c'est des airs, peut-être. Oui. Alors, qui mange en premier On le sait que. Le serpent les... en dernière. Le serpent en dernier euh, Je pense à droite, c'est ça De l'autre côté. Ah, ok. Oui, à, ah, à, à droite. droite. À droite. Ah, le serpent, après. Qu'est-ce qu'il mange, le serpent, du coup Moi, j'arrive, je crois. Non. Le rat. Le rat. Le rat. Très bien. L'araignée. Mmh. L'araignée. Oui. Et puis des graines. Ah non. Waouh. C'est le serpent qui mange l'araignée et l'araignée mmh. mange le. Waouh. Qu'est-ce que. Euh, C'était quoi euh, Souris kangourou ou. Ici, là, oh, pardon, euh, c'était euh, un petit rat. Un petit rat, ok. Ouais. Alors, euh, j'ai encore, encore le temps ou je dois arrêter là euh, On a euh, deux minutes. Deux minutes. Deux, trois minutes. minutes. Qui, qui sait comment euh, Bon, alors, pour deux minutes, on va, on va passer ça. Les parties de la, de la plante, qu'est-ce que c'est ça Est-ce que c'est la fleur, la feuille ou le, et les racines Adrien, tu avais la bonne réponse. Oui, c'est la fleur. fleur. Bravo, Adrien. Euh, ça, c'est quoi J'ai des, des petits pièges là-dedans. Ça, c'est quoi C'est la fleur, la feuille ou la tige Adrien Ou aux autres <rire> enfants Je ne sais même pas. La, le pauvre. Sidonie J'ai l'impression qu'il y a Sidonie qui lève la feuille. main. Oui. Feuille. Feuille. Je ne sais pas, on va laisser Sidonie répondre. Alors, alors. celui-ci. Hein? La, la feuille, la tige ou la fleur La tige. Oui. oui. Et là, c'est la feuille, la fleur ou la graine La graine. Graine. Ouh. Et là, les racines, la feuille ou la fleur La racine. C'est facile, on l'a déjà vu. Et là, on l'a déjà vu, mais après, c'est. Déjà... Là, c'est quoi C'est la graine, la, la fleur ou le, ou le fruit <rire> Ça, la feuille. Bravo. Ah, ah, la fleur, la feuille ou la racine La racine. Oui. Bravo. Et ça, c'est la tige, la feuille ou la fleur pour finir La tige. La tige Oui. Merci. Bravo. Euh... Voilà. Merci d'avoir participé. Merci. La tige et la fleur Oui, je pense qu'avec le brocoli, on a les deux. Hein? Oui, 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 c'est ça, pardon. Ouais. Merci. J'ai envie de finir. Là. Merci voilà. beaucoup, Virginie. Virginie, est-ce que tu as pu rentrer les, les noms des participants dans la rue de la Fortune Absolument. Du coup, euh, j'espère qu'il n'y en a pas d'autres qui se sont mis entre temps euh, durant ma présentation. Mais du coup, voilà, je vais pouvoir tirer en direct. Est-ce que vous êtes prêts Mm -hmm. J'ai mis tout le monde qui a voulu participer. Le gagnant, Muriel. Hunt. Oh, bravo. <rire> bravo. Alors, Muriel, nous aimerions vous, les écoles, les différentes écoles aimeraient vous offrir une petite bibliothèque euh, avec quelques livres. We would like to offer to you a little library with a few books. So, um, is there a way that you can um, give to the French Fest you address so we can send this book to you? Or, Ariane, what would be the best French way? Or, French or English books in French or books in English? Muriel, <coughs> livre en français ou livre en anglais? Oh, j'aimerais bien les avoir en français. D'accord. <laughs> Muriel, j'ai une question pour vous. Vous préférez des, des livres d'adultes ou des livres pour enfants oh, à moitié. Je ne sais pas. Il y en a combien Il y en a Chacun. deux. Il y a deux, deux livres par école. Donc, euh, on est... De chaque Enfants et adultes D'accord. Merci. Et, et quelqu'un nous informe que, Muriel, vous êtes la chef du Café Zoom de Bellingham. C'est ça Oui. Je sais so you're very close to Canada. Oui, 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 oui. 
on oui. commence à avoir du, du, du trafic. Oui, on a hâte de se rendre visite. Oh, oui. Oui. <laughs> We're eager to visit each other. Vous hein? nous manquez beaucoup. Uh, and likewise, but uh, likewise. Muriel, je so, vais mettre mon adresse email dans le, dans le chat. Est-ce que vous voulez à ce moment-là m'envoyer un email? Oui. Comme ça, nous pourrons communiquer. D'accord. Je mets ça pour... Non, attendez. Le host, vous êtes le F, c'est... Euh, oui. Voilà. Merci, je suis très contente. <rire> Bravo. Merci. Merci à tout le monde. Merci pour l'organisation de ces Jeux. Donc, euh, à l'Alliance française, à French Immersion School of Washington, à l'école Lilila, l'école bilingue euh, communautaire, puis à North Seattle French School. Not to forget the French American School of Puget Sound, who is also a gold uh, sponsor of the French Fest. Merci beaucoup d'avoir organisé ça. And thank you everyone for participating. Adrien, beau travail. Merci. <laughs> Uh, et parlant de nos partenaires officiels, on tient à les remercier une fois de plus. We'd like to thank once more our official partners, the Seattle Center Festal, the Consulate General of France in San Francisco, the Consulate General of Canada in Seattle, as well as our platinum partner and sponsor, PACAR. Merci beaucoup, beaucoup uh, également à Ariane Augier et à Didier Poirier. Of, at French Education Northwest, among other uh, affiliations, who really have put their heart and countless hours in organizing this 10th edition of the Seattle French Fest. Um, merci également à Suzanne Kegel, qui, uh, with the Seattle Non-Sister Association for organizing both the visit in France and the visit of the brewer here in Seattle. And thank you to every organization, uh, volunteers and guests who've made this event a success from Nantes all the way to Seattle. Mon nom est Frédéric Choignard, puis je vous souhaite de continuer à célébrer la francophonie, pas seulement pendant le mois de mars, mais pendant toute l'année, et uh, j'ai bien, bien hâte de vous retrouver. <laughs>